Video games are fun. But they can sometimes be too fun. Sometimes you want to play a game, but you don't want to use up your emotional or your mental energy on a lazy weekend afternoon or after a long day at school or work. You want to play a game, but you also want the game to play itself to some degree. You want a gaming experience. A beautiful world, a charming story, or a pleasant gameplay loop that's just engaging enough to entertain without overwhelming a sleepy mind. But I am here today to bring you the good word that the fruits of this tree are plentiful. And because relaxing games are mostly short but soothing, and they're often produced by indie studios, the benefit for us, the gamers, are low prices and high satisfaction. Refunct is a short one. In fact, your first completely blind playthrough might not even take you more than 15 minutes. So it's a testament then to Refunk's quality and replayability that almost all of its overwhelmingly positive Steam reviews are by players who have got several hours in the game. The hardest challenge that you'll face when playing Refunct is deciding how to climb from point A to point B over a relatively short gap with some pretty generous platforming collision to carry you along the way. There's no way to fail. By default, the only challenge is to just get to the end, and you can take as much time about it as you like. However, if you do choose to do so, you can set yourself your own challenges, or you can aim for any of the handful of challenge achievements that the game kindly provides. Or of course, you can simply play the game again at your own pace and enjoy the colors and the music. It's the sort of game where your non-gamer girlfriend might walk past your screen whilst you're playing and say, Oh, that one looks nice. And you know what? She'd be right. Many of you might already be familiar with Goat Simulator because it was a pretty big hit on YouTube when it first came out. This is mainly due to the fact that the game lends itself very well to a certain style of channel whose entire content revolves around them overreacting wildly to every little thing that happens in a game as if it is the most epic and oh my god boys 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 thing that has ever happened in the history of gaming ever. Whilst the other games in this video are relaxing because they are peaceful and tranquil and chill, there's something to be said about the relaxing nature of yeah. f***ing shit up. I mean, what is more relaxing than assuming the form of a penguin-shaped devil goat, activating your telekinetic tornado powers and summoning a storm of sperm whales directly onto your neighbor's garden party? When it comes to games, it's freedom and pressure-free objectives that allow you to let your hair down, or in this instance, let your tongue out. Of course, if you do want motivation to play beyond simply reveling in chaos, then there are a number of in-game quests to aim for which can in turn unlock a large number of modifiers to play with, such as tornado conjuring, or of course, turning into a microwave. And not to mention, there is over a hundred Steam achievements, such as kick a person into a car, burn people from afar, and hit the party with the boulder of death. Now, if that doesn't sound like a relaxing afternoon gaming to you, then I'm sorry, but I just don't think I can help. There's even a level where you can exchange money for hats. Something which you can now do IRL with the brand new Casper merch, available from the link in the description. But more on that later. Soaring carefree through the air like a bird is a fantasy or daydream I think most people have had at some point in their life. AER Memories of Old's main hook is to tap directly into that fantasy and let you wander and roam freely. The flight mechanic in AER is primarily a means to get you from one place to the other. When you reach those places, you'll be solving simple puzzles and fairly rudimentary platforming. Think like the early stages of a Zelda game. 
AER does a surprisingly impressive job of telling a story with very few cutscenes or compulsory narration. Instead, you learn about the world under your own steam and at your own pace. The game does an impressive job of making this sparse and dispersed world feel like a convincing fantasy reality, through long lost spectres with lingering memories, stories left by long ago travellers and majestic animal-like spirits in hidden away caverns, or through cute little dancing crabs. Completing the game will only take you around two hours depending on how much you choose to explore versus just following the objectives. But just like Refunk, there are a number of Steam achievements encouraging you to spend more time with the game's core mechanics, i.e flying around and exploring this simple, yet beautiful world. On the surface, a short hike is nothing more than its name suggests. However, you take a step onto the holiday sands and you quickly sink into a much richer world than it first appears. Your main goal is to hike to the top of the island, but in order to do that, you do need to collect golden feathers which increase your ability to climb and flutter in the air. Golden feathers are earned from various tasks that take you all around the island, from simple fetch quests to games of volleyball, parkour races, finding lost possessions, fishing, and much more. And it all takes place in this wonderfully charming pixel landscape. There's an impressive amount of depth in what is really quite a small world, and I found myself wandering around for hours collecting seashells and studying my fish journal, simply for the joy of immersing myself deeper into the summery beaches and autumnal forests. In fact, this game's atmosphere reminded me a lot of... Okay, I realise this is going to be a long shot here, but it reminded me a hell of a lot of an early 2000s Cartoon Network website flash game called Summer Resort. Now, please bear in mind, not only was I playing this in the context of whatever gaming happened to be 15 years ago, but I was also about 10 years old myself, so the chances are that Cartoon Network's website flash game isn't quite as high quality as my nostalgia-tinted glasses are telling me it is. However, that's okay, because a short hike is here, and its style and charm thoroughly scratch my resort holiday fetch quest itches. It's impressive how much character can be conveyed through simple speech bubbles. Something about the writing in this game had me smirking joyfully to myself from start to finish. I think it was something about the casual and informal tone of the script that had me believing each conversation as if they were real personalities, like the actual strangers you meet when you're playing games on the internet. And all of this charm is only enhanced by the excellently crafted soundtrack. Maybe it's the era that I grew up playing games, but the music in this game often reminded me of a cross between the early Pokemon Game Boy games and The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, two of my personal favourites. It really makes you feel like you're on a wholesome holiday hike. Oh, and you can also buy a hat. And if you like buying hats, you are in luck because Casper hats, t-shirts and sweaters are now available from Crowdmade. Link in the description, from the shelf below this video, and even on the end card on screen right now. Oh, and I've also made other videos which you might enjoy. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you, goodbye. Don't, don't.